Hey book lovers, Victoria here and you're watching My Books Me. Today I'm bringing you my birthday book haul. I turned 21 on the 20th of September and to be fair, I bought a lot of books on my birthday for myself. I didn't receive many books for my birthday, but what are you going to do? Um, so anyway, yeah, I went out for my birthday, had a really great day, bought a lot of books. Me and my friends specifically went book shopping and I bought way too many. The book buying ban officially starts in October because I have a ridiculous amount of books. I need to stop buying books. Um, but most of these books were bought secondhand, so I mean, that kind of makes things a little bit better. Anyway. three books that were actually given to me for my birthday. The first one was from my friend Shanti um, from Books of Contagious. I'll link to her channel below. Um, and that is We Were Liars by E. Lockhart. We wanted to get this book for ages now. I'm so glad that I finally got it. Um, and I'm to be fair, I don't really know what it's about, but I'm just going to read you the blurb. A beautiful and distinguished family, a private island, a brilliant damaged girl, a passionate political boy, a group of four friends, the lies, whose friendship turns destructive, a revolution, an accident, a secret, lies upon lies, true love, the truth. Um, but I've heard really great things about this, so I am very excited to finally read it. The only thing that I'm slightly annoyed about, Shanti, and I told this to you, is that it's the wrong cover edition. Because all of E. Lockhart's books have a really nice font on the cover and they all go together, but I'm not going to be picky because I really want this book, so I'm really excited. And the other two books are given to me by my aunt, and so excited for them. The first one is Through the Woods by Emily Carroll. I think this is a series of five or six. Um, short graphic novel stories um, that all have a horror theme to them and I've heard amazing things about this and I can't wait to read this in October. I love graphic novels and I've been wanting to get into like the proper graphic novel just not like the comic book bind ups that they have out. Um, so I'm very excited for this. Just looking through I've seen some really creepy looking pictures. I'm very excited to read this during October and I will probably get a review up for you guys in October, November when I read this because I am so excited to read it. And the other book was Harry Potter Magical Places from the films by someone, um, but this is just Magical Places from the films. It's got all like the concept art and like the drawings and the graphics and just how they made all of the amazing locations in the films. I'm loving these books like this. There are still like three or four that I need to get but I'm very excited to have this one in my collection and just to like mosey on through it at my own pace and just read bits here and there and look at the pictures because really that's what we do with books like this. We just look at the pretty pictures but I'm very excited to have this in my collection. Now on to the books that I got myself and like I said we went thrift shopping so um, a majority of these are second hand or were really reduced prices which is really good. So the first one I got is Wake by Amanda Hocking. This is the first book in the Water Song series. Um, and Amanda Hocking is the author of the Troll Trilogy, which I absolutely love. And I've been wanting to get some of her other work for ages, so I picked up this when I saw it secondhand. Um, and I think this necessarily doesn't necessarily have anything to do with mermaids. I'm not entirely sure what this is about. Um, I don't know. I don't really know what this is about, but I'm still very excited. I've heard really good things about this, and I really love Amanda Hawkins' writing, so I can't wait to get into this book. And then I picked up Harry Potter and the Chamber of Secrets, obviously by J.K. Rowling. This is in the lovely shiny edition, um, and I got, I've got, I've obviously got the whole um, set in the original Bloomsbury covers, um, which I love. Um, but I also have the first book in this nice special shiny edition because it's the one with Dumbledore on the spine and on the back. And when I saw this at $2 I was like, I'm just going to get it because you really can never have too many Harry Potter books. So that's why I got this one. The next book I picked up was The Borgias by Christopher Hibbert. This is a non-fiction book about the Borgia family who, um, um, who, how can I... I like who um, Rodrigo uh, Borgia came in as Pope Alexander the Sixth, um, and the Borgia are known have been known during the Italian Renaissance as very corrupt. Um, there's actually a TV series called The Borgias. It runs it ran for three seasons. I definitely recommend checking it out if you are a fan of like the Tudors and Rain and Game of Thrones. It's really interesting and really fun and really good. Um, and I've been eyeing off of getting some sort of book about the Borgias because I find 
Well, from the TV series, I found them really interesting, and I just sort of find those sort of um, aspects in history, you know, like rulers and like families like that who have a deep and corrupt and sinister aspect to them. And I'm very excited to make my way through this one at some point. Don't know when I'm going to read it, but very excited nonetheless. And then picked up Goddess by Laura Powell. Um, I don't really know anything about this book. It just looked really bright and colourful on the shelf. The cult of Artemis is the only home Aurora has ever known. Enclosed in its luxury lifestyle, the unrest gripping the country seems to belong to a distant world. Her dream is to serve the goddess and taking a vow of chastity and obedience seems a small price to pay. But the days before Aurora is due to be initiated as a priestess, she meets Aiden, a rebellious son of a cult leader whose radical ideas of unsettling charm force Aurora, Aurora to question everything and everyone she knows. So I mean this is just about Greek mythology and I like Greek mythology and I feel like this might be an interesting read, especially after I've read like Rick Ryden and, and things like that. Um, I don't know if this is a series, it could be, I don't really know. But I mean it looks pretty so I'm excited to give it a go. The next book is also one that I don't really know anything about and that is Velvet by Mary Hooper. This is a historical fiction. Um, and it's about this girl Velvet who's an orphan. She struggles to make ends meet by working at a steam laundry where the work is backbreaking and exhausting. So when she attracts the attention of the glamorous clairvoyant Madame Savoya, um, she cannot believe her good fortune. Raised to the status of a lady's maid, Velvet is given elegant clothes to wear and is brought to live in a grand house in London. But the longer she works for Madame Savoya, I don't really know if that's how you say her name, but anyway, the more she realises that her employer is not quite what she seems and that this knowledge could put her very life in danger. So it sounds interesting. Um, I haven't heard of this before or of the author, but I mean, the author seems to have gotten a lot of praise, so we'll see how we go. The next book I picked up is Rebel of the Sands by Alwyn Hamilton. This book um, only came out, was it last year or early this year? This book came out early this year, I think it was, um, and is received a lot of praise and a lot of hype here on BookTube. You've probably all heard of it. Um, it's, I'm pretty sure it's meant to be some sort of retelling of Arabian Nights, um, but it's something like that. I don't really know. But I mean, it, it's gotten really great things. It's a book that I really wanted to read. And the cover for the, I just saw recently the cover for the second book. I think it's only going to be a duology. And it looks absolutely amazing. So I mean, even if I don't like it, I am going to keep it because the cover and the spine look so pretty. Um, yeah. This should be really fun. The next book I picked up is a bit different. And that is The World's Greatest Political Scandals by Nigel Cawthorn. Um, my parents have got two books in this series that I've kind of commandeered as my own. Um, it was on, what are they, Hollywood Scandals and I think Crooks and Crimes. Um, and I saw this second hand and I was like, I'm going to get it because, not that I've read those other two books, but they are books that I probably would read now. Um, I just thought it'd be interesting. I mean, this is got Bill Clinton on the front. We all know what sort of political scandals he was involved in. Um, so I just thought this would be a fun read. Also in this series are World's well, Greatest Cults, um, Royal Scandals, Serial Killers, UFO Mysteries and Fantastic Freaks. And like I said, I've also got, where did I even put the books? Um, Hollywood Scandals and Crooks and Criminals, I think. Um, but yeah, this should be just a really interesting read. I was going to say fun. I mean, it probably is going to be fun. An interesting read. Um, but if you're interested in these things, I definitely recommend trying to check out this series probably on eBay or something or maybe Amazon if you're interested in like scandals and interesting things like that. Another book I picked up secondhand is The Time Traveler's Wife by Audrey Neffenegger. Neffenginger. I just realised I've never known how to say her name. Anyway, obviously we all know this book. It became a movie and I have to be honest, I've only ever seen probably like half of the movie and I don't even think it was like the first half or the last half. I think it was like in the middle or like bits and pieces. I don't really know, but I've never seen the full movie. And I'm at the point now where I'm like, I am just really want to read the book first um, before I re-watch it again. Um, but I don't know. Uh, the concept is interesting. 
Um, it's, I'm just going to read you this. We all know what it's about though. Uh, this is the extraordinary love story of Claire and Henry who met when Claire was six and Henry was 36 and were married when Claire was 22 and Henry 30. Impossible but true because Henry suffers from a rare condition where his genetic clock periodically resets and he finds himself pulled suddenly into his past or future. In the face of this force, they can neither prevent nor control Henry and, <coughs> Henry and Claire. Henry and Claire's struggles lead to lead normal lives in both intensely moving and entirely forgettable. So I mean, it's gotten really good reviews both as a book and as a movie, so I'm just really excited now to read this. Again, I don't know when I'm going to get to it. I feel like I, I have to be in the mood for a book like this. Um, I'm not in the mood at this at the moment, but when I saw it only for $2, I thought I'd better pick it up because I've been eyeing it off for ages now and now I finally have it. Next book I got secondhand sounds interesting, and that is A Resurrection by Robin Young. This is the first book in the Resurrection trilogy. Um, I hate going like secondhand book shopping when you find like books that you really want, but it's like not the first one, and they have maybe all of them but the first one, and you don't know whether you should get the book because you don't know if you're ever going to find the first book. Anyway, the point is this is the first one. Um, and this is about... I feel like this is following... Um, Edward the Sixth. Maybe. One of the... Okay, maybe not. I take that back. It's not following Edward the Six. It's probably following Edward the. Oh, let's look at the character list. It's following an Edward. <laughs> I'm not sure which one. Oh, here we go. Um, oh, the first Edward, 1272 to 1307. So, right, the King of Scotland is dead. The nobles fight over the succession, unaware that King Edward of England has plans of his own. For years, Edward has nurtured a fierce vision of conquest, inspired by the words of ancient of an ancient prophecy that will change the face of Britain forever. In this divided land, a boy grows to manhood, his family torn apart by ambition and betrayal. The path he takes will never be smooth. He will serve his enemy and betray his friends before he finds himself. My destiny is waiting to claim him. His name is Robert the Bruce and his story begins in a resurrection. So it's not really following the king, um, but it's following this Robin, Robert the Bruce, um, who I don't really know. I don't know if he's actually a historical figure or whatnot. Thank God for having character lists. Always helpful. Um, I don't... Great. There is heaps of Robert Bruce's. Anyway, this sounds really interesting. I like historical fiction, especially um, sort of based around medieval times. So this sounds really interesting. Again, it's a book I don't know when I'm going to get to. But I have it now. It was $2, so I can read it now. Not that I've ever been needing to read it, but you know what I mean. Another, again, another book that I don't know anything about, but just sounds really, really cool. And that is Conjured by Sarah Beth Durst. And I think this is a book that I've sort of seen maybe on Goodreads and added it to my um, to-read shelf. I don't really know. Um, but there are three things that Eve knows. One, she can't remember who she is, but she has someone else's face and name. Two, she's the only survivor of a notorious serial killer who will never stop haunting her. I mean, hunting her. Three, there is something horrifying buried in her memories that her protectors want to access, and there is nothing they won't do to get her to remember. But once she remembers who and what she is, no one's life will remain untouched. Not her protectors, not flirty and charming Zacks, and definitely not her own. I don't really know what this is about, but I mean, that just sounds awesome. And again, I think it's a book that I have seen. It's been blurred by Lainey Taylor. Not that I've read any of her books, but that is not the point. Um, but yeah, it just sounds really interesting. I haven't really heard anything good or bad about it, but it sounds fun. Getting to the end, the next book I picked up is Great Tales of English History by Robert Lacey. This is essentially just a collection of, um, I'm going to call them short stories, even though they're not stories, they're actually historical tales. I don't know, but it looks at... A treasury of two stories about the extraordinary people, knights and knaves, rebels and heroes, queens and commoners who made Britain great. Um, the whole colourful parade of English history brilliantly captured in a single volume, including the surprising truth about Cheddar Man, um, King Arthur, Ethel the Unready, Rich Richard the Lionheart, Lady Godiva, Piers the Plowman, Geoffrey Chaucer, Joan of Arc, Henry VIII's um, divorce, 
because <laughs> we need true stories about that, we already know. Uh, Mary Queen of Scots, Sir Francis Drake and the Spanish Armada, King James, King James's Authentical Bible, Oliver Cromwell, The Great Fire of London, Isaac Newton, Samuel Johnson, Captain Cook, The Madness of King George III, Thomas Paine, Mary Wollstonecraft, Wellington and Waterloo, Prince Albert's Crystal Palace, Charles Darwin, The Strike of the Match Girls, Neville Chamberlain's Peace of Our Time, Watson and Crick, and scores of others. I love English history, as you guys may or may not know. I'm not quite sure. Um, I've probably mentioned it quite a lot. Um, and this just sounded like it would be really fun just to pick up and read a story here and there and learn something new about some tiny, well, not tiny, but just learn something new about aspects of people um, and events in history that we might think we know a lot about, but maybe we don't know these really cool and fun, interesting stories. So I'm very excited to just make my way through this one. Final three. The next book I picked up was Tales of the Peculiar by Ransom Riggs. This book just came out this month and it is essentially a prequel to the Miss Peregrine's Home for Peculiar Children series um, and it's meant to be like fairy tales of peculiars. Um, so hang on. Wow, this looks cool. Um, where are we? So we have like the Splendid Cannibal, the Splendid Cannibals, the Fog Tongue Princess, the first Nimbine, I really don't know how to say that, the woman who befriended ghosts, uh, Cocobolo, uh, the Pigeons of St. Paul's, the girl who could tame nightmares, the Locust, the boy who could hold back the sea, the tale of Cuthbert. Um, so this isn't meant to be set out as like fairy tales of the world of the peculiar um, and I'm very excited about this one I don't think I'm going to read it very um, anytime soon I really want to finish the trilogy before I do just in case there are maybe spoilers I don't think there is going to be spoilers for the trilogy but I think but I think if I've read all the books then I at least have a bit of knowledge about um, the cast of characters and things like that before diving into this but if you are a fan of the books then I definitely recommend getting this one um, it just it's so beautiful and I can't wait to read it. Hopefully, I'm going to say early next year, I reckon by the time I get around to it. But I'm planning, I'm going to pick this up as soon as I finish Library of Souls. <laughs> I had to remember who which one was the third one. Next book I got is Into That Forest by uh, Louis Naura. Um, two young girls go into that forest and come out changed forever. An unforgettable and heartbreaking novel by Louis Naura, one of Australia's foremost literary talents. Um, this was also on my Goodreads to read shelf, um, but I don't even know really what it's about. It just sounds really interesting, it's Australian, I think it's meant to be some sort of creepy read, I might try and squeeze it into my October TBR, um, and there are also some illustrations in it, there's like some photos of it, so I really don't know, we're going to give it a go. Finally the last book I picked up is as is as Puck would have it by Paul Rudertus, the I think it's like the 34th book in the Charmed novelization series, um, which is very exciting that I managed to pick it up secondhand, somewhat locally, um, which always surprises me because I've just, you know, I feel like these books wouldn't be the books you'd find in secondhand bookstores around where I live because I kind of live out, not really in the middle of nowhere, but I could for these books. It's the middle of nowhere for these books, really. Um, so yeah, very excited to get to this one. It might take me a while because it's the 34th book and I want to read these in order, such, <coughs> such as they are. So yeah, very excited. So they are all the books that I got for my birthday, but they are definitely not all the books I got this month. I'll be doing a um, September book haul next week sometime. I won't be including these books. I'll be just talking about all the other books that I got during the month, or really all the books I got before my birthday. Um, so yeah, let me know if you've read any of these books, what you've heard, especially those few that, that I've never heard of that I picked up. Um, I just want to know what people think, if they have read them before. Um, other than that, I will see you guys soon with another video. Bye!